the blessed Apostle Paul, discoursing of this heavenly treasure of the grace of the Spirit, and declaring the exceeding greatness of that tribulation, and at the same indicating what each of us ought to strive to attain in this life, says, We know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. We ought all, therefore, to strive and endeavor by every kind of virtue, and to believe that we shall gain possession of that house, even here. For if the house of our body is dissolved, we have no other house for the soul to turn into. If, it says, being clothed, we shall not be found naked, naked, that is, of the communion and inblending of the Holy Ghost, in which alone the faithful soul can find rest. For this reason, Christians who are Christians in truth and efficacy are confident and glad at the departure from the flesh because they have that house made without hands, which house is the power of the Spirit dwelling in them. Therefore, even if the house of the body is dissolved, they are in no fear because they have the heavenly house of the Spirit and that incorruptible glory which glory in the resurrection day shall build up and glorify the house of the body as well. As the apostle tells us, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken also your mortal bodies through his spirit that dwelleth in you. And again, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. And that mortality, it says, may be swallowed up of life. Let us strive, then, by faith and virtuous living, to gain here that clothing, that when we put off the body we may not be found naked, and there be nothing in that day to glorify our flesh. For in proportion as anyone has been permitted to become through faith and diligence a partaker of the Holy Ghost, his body also shall be glorified in that day. What the soul has now stored up within shall then be revealed and displayed outwardly in the body. As trees that have got over the winter, when warmed by the unseen influence of sun and winds, put forth from within and shoot out their clothing of leaves, and as at that season flowers of the grass come forth from within the bosom of the earth, and the earth is covered and dressed, and the grass is like those lilies of which the Lord said that not even Solomon in all of his glory was arrayed like one of them. For these are all parables and types and figures of Christians at the resurrection. So to all God-loving souls, to true Christians, there comes a first month, a Xanthicus, which is called April, it is the day of resurrection, and by the power of the Son of Righteousness, the glory of the Holy Ghost comes out from within, decking and covering the bodies of the saints. The glory which they had before, but hidden within their souls. What a man has now, the same then comes forth externally in the body. This month, it says, shall be the first month of the year. This brings forth joy for all the creation. This dresses the naked trees, opening the earth. This brings forth joy for all living things. This displays mirth for all. This is for Christians, Xanthicus, the first month, which is the season of resurrection, in which their bodies shall be glorified through the unspeakable light which even now is in them. That is the power of the Holy Ghost, and which shall then be to them rament, meat, drink, gladness, joy, peace, robe, eternal life. For all beauty of brightness and of heavenly splendor will then come to them from that spirit of the Godhead which they were privileged even now to receive. How ought then every one of us to believe and to strive and to be diligent in all virtuous living, 
and with much hope and patience to look for the privilege of receiving now that power from heaven and the glory of the Holy Ghost inwardly in the soul, in order that then, when our bodies are dissolved, we may have what shall clothe and quicken us. If so be, it says, that being clothed we shall not be found naked, and he shall quicken our mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in us. The blessed Moses showed in a type, through the glory of the Spirit which was set upon his countenance, upon which no man was able to look steadfastly, how at the resurrection of the just the bodies of those that are worthy shall be glorified. With a glory even now the souls of holy and faithful people are privileged to have within, upon the inner man. For we all, it says, with open face, that is to say, in the inward man, reflect as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory. In like manner, for forty days and forty nights, as it is written, he did neither eat bread nor drink water. It was not possible for the nature of the body to live so long without bread, unless he partook of some other spiritual food, of which food the soul of the saints even now invisibly partake of by the gift of the Spirit. In two ways, therefore, the blessed Moses showed what glory of light and what immaterial dainties of the Spirit true Christians shall have at the resurrection, which even now are vouchsafed to them in a hidden manner and therefore shall be manifested also upon their bodies. The glory which the saints now have in their souls, the same, as we said before, shall cover and clothe their naked bodies, and catch them into heaven, and thenceforward we shall rest in body and soul, in the kingdom with the Lord forever. When God created Adam, he did not provide him with bodily wings like the birds, but he had designed for him the wings of the Holy Ghost, those wings which he purposes to give him at the resurrection, to lift him up and catch him away whithersoever the Spirit pleases, which holy souls even now are privileged to have, and fly up in mind to the heavenly frame of thought. For Christians have a different world of their own, another table, another remnant, another sort of enjoyment, other fellowship, another frame of mind, for which reason they are superior to other men. The power of these things, it is their privilege to have now within them in their souls, through the Holy Ghost. Therefore, at the resurrection, their bodies also will be permitted to share those eternal blessings of the Spirit and will be mixed with that glory which their souls in this life had known by experience. Every one of us, therefore, ought to strive and take pains and be diligent in all virtues and to believe and to seek from the Lord that the inward man may be made partaker of that glory here and now and that the soul may have fellowship in that sanctity of the Spirit, in order that we may be cleansed from the defilements of wickedness, and may have at the resurrection wherewithal to clothe our bodies as they rise naked, and to robe their uncomeliness and quicken them, and refresh them forever in the kingdom of heaven. For Christ will come down from heaven and raise up all the tribes of Adam, those who from the beginning have fallen asleep, according to the Holy Scriptures, and will set them all in two divisions. And those who bear his own sign, that is, the seal of the Holy Spirit, he will call to him as his very own and set them on his right hand. For my sheep, he says, hear my voice, and I know mine own and am known of mine. Then shall the bodies of these be arrayed with divine glory from their good works, and shall be full of the glory of the Spirit, which they had in their souls even here, 
and thus being glorified in the divine light and caught up into the heavens to meet the Lord in the air as it is written, we shall ever be with the Lord, rejoicing with him to ages without end. Amen.